Good evening. evening. Happy Easter. Easter. It's Easter, come on. (laughs) So if you didn't recognize it right off the bat here, today's gospel, I think, kind of gives Thomas a, a bad rap. That nickname that he got, the Doubting Thomas, from today's gospel. And the reason I think he gets a bad rap is because if we look at this same story in the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we find that all of the disciples had trouble believing that Christ had risen from the dead and was there. As a matter of fact, in Mark's Gospel, Jesus rebukes the apostles for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. But I think we can all relate to their trouble believing that their rabbi, their teacher, their leader, who had just been arrested, who had just been tortured, who had just been crucified and killed and buried, was now standing in front of them. Physically standing in front of them and interacting with them. Right? How many of us, when we hear some hard-to-believe news, we say, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it? Right? I couldn't believe that Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. But I saw it, and I believed it. Who would have thought that the Red Sox would have won a World Series? But we saw it. So we all sometimes need that encounter or that observation to help us believe. And so this is what the apostles were experiencing. And so I think today, Thomas is just an example for us of how we can relate to that. For us to believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again. So Thomas, after he was commissioned with the other apostles, went out and spread the gospel into India and as far as China before he was ultimately martyred for his faith. And if we look at the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, a story which takes place later on from where we are in the upper room in the gospel message, there's a line there in today's reading where it says, with great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrected Christ with great power. This is what drove them to spread the gospel message, that witness. Now, if we look at salvation history, going all the way back to Abraham, we'll see that God has used ordinary people like you and I to bear witness, to carry his message to the people. Abraham, Noah, Moses. Moses encountered God on Mount Sinai, right? He brought down the Ten Commandments. And we follow that through the Old Testament, all the way through all the prophets of the Old Testament, right up to John the Baptist. But personally, I find that the most powerful witnesses since the beginning of the church are the martyrs. Those who are willing to die for their faith willingly. That's powerful witness. Powerful witness. And would you believe that today, in our current day, there are more martyrs for our faith than there were in those first few centuries of the persecution of the early church? Now, you and I have the luxury today, after Mass this evening, We could stop at Starbucks, pick up a latte, go home, change it to some comfortable clothes, and click on the TV and not think twice about it. But there are Christians right now who are trying to get out of Mass secretly and try to get home safely. But those early Christians that were persecuted, the ones that were actually put out into the Colosseum and fed to the lions, for the entertainment 
of the crowds. There are accounts that there were hundreds, if not thousands, of pagans that were converted to Christianity just by watching those Christians willingly go to their deaths rather than renounce their faith. Those people were giving witness to the risen Christ, and they refused to renounce their faith. I'm giving witness to you right now. Many of you, whether you know it or not, are witnessing to your faith. I like to relate my story of my encounter and my witness to the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. I don't know if you remember that one. They say Zacchaeus was short in stature, but he was a tax collector. And he was curious about this local celebrity, this, this preacher, this rabbi that was going to be coming into town. And he wanted to get a look. But by the time he made it out to the road where Jesus was entering the town, there was already a large crowd gathered. And being short in stature, he couldn't see. So he climbed up the sycamore tree. And sure enough, Jesus came walking down the road. But instead of just getting a glimpse Jesus looked up at Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. I'm going to have dinner at your house tonight. How's that for an encounter? In your face. And that's kind of how I relate my experience with my encounter. I knew about Jesus. I went to Catholic school, but I didn't know Jesus. I didn't encounter him. But how fitting that it's Divine Mercy Sunday. And you may have heard in some of my previous homilies that I really encountered him in the confessional, in the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation, experiencing that mercy. But that's available to all of us. That encounter is available to all of us. So we need to be intentional about this. Now, your witness doesn't mean that you have to pick up a speaker and go out on Wyckoff Ave and start beating people over the head with a Bible and becoming a street preacher. Our witness is living a Christian life and being a witness to our faith through word and deed. But we need to have that encounter. So how do we encounter him? We encounter him in the sacraments. We encounter him in Scripture. We encounter him at Mass. We encounter him when we're in fellowship together. But we have to seek him out. And we have to work on that relationship, on deepening that relationship. Right now, my favorite place to encounter him is just in silence and prayer. That's when I find that he's sitting in front of me, coming to my place for dinner. So, as we walk out of here tonight, Easter season, let's keep in mind what the apostles and what Thomas were doing as they were witnessing to their faith. And it really comes back to just one thing. He is risen. Risen.